custom integration company, meaning I help people implement technology into their homes and businesses. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how you can utilize the Protect app on your Ubiquiti equipment and how you can utilize OnViv cameras in a deployment where you may not necessarily have exclusively Ubiquiti cameras. In our business, we primarily focus on smart home and light commercial deployments. There are all sorts of different products that we use, including Lutron, Sonos, Ubiquity for all of our networking. And we do have guides in our description and on our website of how you can implement all these products into a smart home for yourself. So make sure to check it out below. We also have different accessories that you can utilize in your home network or in your rack that work with Ubiquity products, specifically customized colored patch panel blanks. If that's something you're interested in, go ahead, check it out. It's in our description on our website. So in our scenario, we take over a lot of residential clients that may already have existing systems or have equipment already installed in their homes. So let's say for an example, we come in to take over the network and we swap it out from a different brand, whether it's Luxel, Arachnus, TP-Link, whatever it is, and we're gonna go ahead and put in a ubiquity stack of equipment, but the client is not ready to completely swap over maybe the existing NVR that they have or the products and cameras that they already have on the home. We use the Protect application on the Ubiquity equipment because the end user experience is so much nicer than a lot of the competitors or maybe whatever NVR you're using. We install all sorts of cameras, whether it's Hikvision, Dahua, Axis, Ubiquity, Luma, you name it, we have put it in. I can tell you from that experience that the end user app is typically not the greatest. It is always the point of contention for us with clients that the app is hard to use for playback or for searching for things, or maybe it just doesn't have all the features that they're looking for. So maybe they have a fairly inexpensive camera set up already, whether it's, let's say it's a Dahua camera, um, already deployed and they're tired of using the DMSS app. Protect does a much better job in my opinion on giving them the ability to go back, search events, search all different types of things. And as, especially if you're using Ubiquity cameras, you have endless different types of settings that you can go through. So in this video, what I've done is I've taken some third-party cameras that we have here at the shop. We have an Axis camera, we have a Luma camera, and then I have multiple Ubiquity cameras already on our network. We're gonna plug them into our rack. I will show you how to adopt them into your Protect app and use them as an OnViv camera. Some things to keep in mind if you're going to use a third-party camera as opposed to a Ubiquity camera in the Protect app, there are some limitations as to what you're gonna get. You're mostly only gonna get live view. You're not gonna be able to do motion events on almost any OnViv camera. I don't know if that's coming out in the future, but that, that may be something that Ubiquity launches in the Protect app later down the road. Then I will show you a compare and contrast of using a Ubiquity camera, like for example, the AI Pro or the G5 Pro versus using an OnViv camera and what the differences look like in the Protect app. Another thing that we'll touch on in the video is the new AI key that Ubiquity just launched, which is going to take it to a whole nother level of being able to detect and go back through recorded motions, events, and speech that allows you to really get the most out of your Ubiquity equipment. All right, so let's go grab some cameras and test out the OnViv function of utilizing a non-Ubiquity camera inside of a Ubiquity Protect application that you're running on either your UDM Pro, a Cloud Key, or any other Ubiquity equipment that's capable of running the Protect app. So you can see here, I already have an AI Pro that is plugged in sitting on top of our rack. I have a Luma camera, which is up top there, um, which we're gonna plug into a PoE port on our switch. Now let's go grab another camera. I had a spare Axis camera in our van from a recent deployment on a service call that we went on. After I had put that Luma camera in, I realized why we had it, because it's defective and the lens does not work. Um, but for all intents and purposes of this demonstration, it, it adopts into the system just fine. It functions, but it doesn't. Uh, there's no actual live view of it. So I'm just gonna grab a patch cable out of our stock room. Go ahead and take this axis bullet and do this exact same process. 
plug it into a PoE port on our switch so that it will power up and be available for adoption. Next, I'll take you over to the Ubiquiti dashboard and we can walk through how you actually adopt and set up. So now we're in the Unify dashboard where I have it sped up a little bit, but we're gonna go in and add that access camera. So as you can see, just like any Unify camera, it says click to adopt. However, because this is not natively a Ubiquiti camera, it is gonna ask you for a username and password. This camera is brand new, so it does not have one uh, set up to it already. Some cameras are going to have defaults to them. Axis does not. So what you see me doing here is I'm gonna go over to my switch. I'm going to find the port that that Axis camera is on. I'm going to pull the IP address for it so that I can go ahead and put that into a web page and access the camera. By doing that, it's going to allow me the first time set up to set a username and password for this camera so that Ubiquiti will now have access to it. Now that I have a password set up, you're gonna see me go over back to the Ubiquiti uh, dashboard and go and type in that username and password to allow Ubiquiti access to the camera. Um, I didn't, it, you're gonna see it fail. I didn't realize that the access camera was going to need a user set up for it. So as I do that, it fails. I'm gonna go back into that access camera, go into the settings, add a user, and then it will function exactly the same on the Ubiquiti side. All cameras are gonna be different. Um, everyone is gonna have its own little setup in its UI for how you need to make it work as Onviv. Um, but this was a pretty simple workaround to get that to happen. All right, so let's run through the AI Pro camera to show kind of what the difference is with your motion settings and motion capture and all of your different recording is gonna be. So inside of the Unify dashboard here, I am in the Protect application. We're gonna click on that AI Pro camera. We're gonna to go to settings. Now you have all sorts of different types of individual motion settings that you can set up for a camera like this. So under the recording settings, we're gonna go in. So I have this camera just for demonstration purposes. It, the camera is not even mounted. It is sitting on top of our rack right now with the other two OnViv cameras that you'll see in this video. What we're gonna do is we have it set to continuous recording and we're gonna turn on create AI events. So what it's going to look for is animals, face, license plates, persons, and vehicles. The AI Pro does have the ability to do LPR or license plate recogni recognition. It does look like Ubiquiti has just launched recently and dedicated LPR camera, which for people who have not installed something like that, on the commercial side, that is a very integral part to most commercial deployments is being able to pick up a vehicle and their license plate as they go past um, specific cameras. Like for example, the Axis LPR that we frequently install can do a vehicle moving up to 30 miles an hour. It'll still catch the license plate. Um, but Ubiquiti does have that built into the AI Pro camera. And then, like I mentioned before, that AI key that just came out is gonna give you even more in depth into the motion settings and what you can pick up. Uh, you can go in and search individual things like person wearing a blue hat, and it's gonna go through all of the recordings. I believe it does up to a thousand uh, in an hour, and it's going to pull all of those images that match your description. Another thing you can do is you can set the timeline for how long it is going to record before and after a AI detection, which would be picking up a face, a person, a vehicle, whatever you put in. We, For this example, we have all of the, the recording quality set to the standard, so it's on auto. Uh, this camera is recording in 4K, but for storage um, needs, you could reduce it down to 2K or 1080p HD. 
Another nice piece that we typically will always go and turn on for any of our clients is putting the overlay information on the actual screen for that camera. So we go ahead and put the time, the camera, and we do leave the Ubiquiti logo, but you could remove that if you wanted to. A big piece to the nice thing of using Ubiquiti cameras when you're using Ubiquiti Protect is you're going to go ahead and be able to edit your different motion zones. So as you can see, I am sitting in the bottom left-hand corner recording this right now, and this is shooting our conference room. Now let's say, for example, it is just this doorway that I wanted to catch motion in. I can go and set that as our field so that it is only going to pick up motion inside of that. Another piece that you can do is privacy blackouts. So adding a privacy blackout is something, for example, if this was an exterior camera in more of like a subdivision, for example, and you have neighbors directly across and you don't want it to record inside of a window that is right near you. So let's pretend there is a window right above me here we can go ahead and set this privacy blackout range where it is not going to record or pick up motion in that specific area. For image tuning, you have all sorts of different settings that you can go based on where your camera's deployed, whether it is inside, outside, um, in a dark hallway, anything like that. Now let's take a look at the example of an OnViv camera. On an OnViv camera, this is an Axis bullet, which we have full live view of directly right here. However, the difference with something like this is you'll notice that the settings is dramatically less. There are no motion settings. There is no individual settings that you can go into when you're using a third-party OnViv camera. Like I mentioned before, the benefit of using an OnViv camera is an example where you may have, you switched over to Ubiquiti for your network and you're looking to take advantage of the Protect app as opposed to maybe the built-in app that comes with the NVR for whatever brand you're using. Like I said before, the Ubiquiti Protect app, I just in the business for end users to utilize an app to go back and see recordings or see live view or anything that has to do with your cameras. So those are all the different use cases between using a Ubiquiti camera and using a third-party camera through OnViv with Ubiquiti Protect. Now, like I mentioned earlier in the video, Ubiquiti Protect, I do thoroughly believe that it has the best end user application for viewing cameras. Like I mentioned before, primarily our customers are residential, which means we need to have the easiest, most user-friendly application possible. Uh, on a commercial application, a lot of times it's more expected with a bigger involved camera deployment, whether it's Ubiquiti, or for example, if we're doing a very large deployment and it's gonna be access cameras, they already have someone who is used to navigating that software. But for most of our clients in the residential application, I want that app to be as easy as possible to use and Ubiquiti does an outstanding job of that. Thank you for watching our video. I hope you found some tips and tricks in here. If you are gonna be using third-party cameras on your Protect app, as always, if you're looking for a company to manage your Ubiquiti network or help you design a Ubiquiti network, Protect network, or audio distribution in a new construction home, we have those services available on our website. Catch 